The V-Dub Ameo is here. We have the review of the 1.2 petrol. ESC is off, but the Quattro gets you through. That's ice driving with Audi in Finland. And a quick look at the new generation of the A5 that's just been revealed in Ingolstadt. A brand new week here on CNB. Thanks for joining us. I'm Siddharth Panayak Patankar and it is the Volkswagen Ameo that we've finally got for you on the program. I say finally because, well, it was first shown to us way back in February and then VW has taken its time bringing it to the market. Even now, it's just the petrol, the 1.2 that's been launched and the rest of the variants are going to follow a few months down the line, says VW. How is the petrol and what's the car like in terms of overall attribute? Ameya Naik drove it to find out. There were a lot of expectations from Volkswagen when it announced the launch of a sub 4 meter sedan. The Ameo was unveiled in February at the Auto Expo and VW is now hoping it brings its success. Success that has been very elusive for the German car maker in India. And if the car does well, it may just rub off on one Ameo of our own. Well, it's seldom that you get a car named after yourself. Well, halfway there, Amio is far enough, I guess. But Volkswagen has come out with this subcompact uh, sedan, which actually tells us how serious the company is about its India plans. Well, getting into the segment, which is already crowded by many rivals, Volkswagen wants to make a statement. And they did so by saying that it's made in India, made for India. What they left out though was that it's designed in Wolfsburg. <laughs> but Volkswagen is very serious about this market and we'll see the diesel variant come out by Diwali this year. But this one, for the time being, we have the petrol. While at first glance it appears to be a polo with a stubby boot or a vento with a chopped rear, it is in fact neither. In a sense, 35 mm have been shaved off the front bumper to make it look more proportionate from either end. It's a muscular front end too and the lines on the sides give the design a flow towards the rear. It also gets a big lower air intake and the air dam has a dash of chrome. The halogen headlamps are finished in black and we do like the blue silk paint colour. Now we were told that the benchmark for its design were the Maruti Suzuki Swift Desire and the Hyundai Accent which certainly comes as a surprise considering the Figo Aspire or Honda Amaze are the better looking cars in this segment. Volkswagen is offering only the petrol 1.2 litre engine to begin with and this is a tried and tested mule in India. 73 bhp is what it produces and there is 110 nm of torque on offer and you might say the power is pretty sufficient for the segment. Now the petrol is no rocket and you understand that in the initial revs. Every gear change in the range of 2000 to 2500 rpm is met with equal delight and there is a good amount of surge even when you are planning an overtake manoeuvre. But then again there is no feedback if the needle drops below the 2000 rpm mark. The engine tends to get a bit noisy at mid to higher revs but the gear shifts are smooth and that's something you would expect from VW. It actually feels very similar to the Polo in its overall drive feel. The lack of power probably compensates for the fuel economy figures of 17.83 km to the litre and that is a big thumbs up for Volkswagen. On the safety front, VW has done well. 
ABS and dual front airbags are part of standard equipment across variants. ESP is also available from the Comfort Line variant up, but only on models with the DSG transmission, which is yet to be launched, of course. Now let's show you inside. Now the cabin is a familiar place because you've seen all this even in the Polo and the Vento, the black and the beige and basically all the components here are from these two cars. But the flat bottom steering which now comes standard gives the Amio a bit of sporty look on the inside. It's pretty nice to maneuver it. Uh, what it also has is ABS and dual frontal airbags as standard equipment. But what goes out missing is a seat belt warning sign or a seat belt warning light. So even if I do this, there's nothing, there's no sound at all. And I think those are the basics of safety. But somehow Volkswagen has given it a miss. Very sad though. The wheelbase is the same as the Polo and so you will feel a bit cramped at the rear but there is enough boot space to gobble up your luggage. The 330 litres of boot space isn't the best in the segment though with the Hyundai Accent that has a bigger 407 litre boot topping it. The Amio has cruise control, automatic rain sensing wipers, power windows with one touch operation and even anti-pinch power windows. It also gets a rear AC vent and a front centre armrest, but that's only available on the top-end Highline variant. The Highline variant also sees a touchscreen infotainment system with a CD player, USB, Auxin and Bluetooth. There's also Mirror Link, which does not support iOS but works on Android. And though we couldn't manage to connect an Android-based device, we were told that the problem was restricted to a few devices only. Volkswagen has managed to undercut all its rivals with the petrol variant. In fact, it undercuts even the Polo hatch. The Amio petrol starts at 5,24,000 rupees and tops off at 7,5,000 rupees ex showroom Delhi. We will wait for the diesel to launch and from what we've heard, it will blow our minds away of pricing too. Can't wait to also test the diesel and the DSG Ameo and in case you're wondering how the petrol stacks up against its rivals, well we've already done that for you and that is going to be a comparative review that airs on CNB Bazaar Buzz on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Well, Honda is celebrating a new milestone with this bike. It is 10,000 units that have been dispatched since March when uh, the bike officially opened up and of course remember that the deliveries only started in April. So uh, it's still early days for this bike but it's a new segment which is what excites me about it and we're waiting to see how it ends up in the Indian motorcycle or scooter space, however you want to categorize it. Now let's quickly hear in a little bit from Honda's management. We spoke with uh, Mr. Guleria about how the Navi has been doing and after that take a very short break. It is more than what we would have expected or it was there in our plan. So the very fact that we were not ready to serve that kind of customization uh, leads to that back order. So that's the first point that it has exceeded our expectation that almost 50% of our uh, customers who are buying Navi are opting for customization. So that's the first point. And second, yes, we will not uh, stop here. There are a lot of uh, back-end work which is uh, going on. Just behind you is a Navi ideation room and uh, we have already started calling it as Navi Navilution. Not <laughs> evolution, but it's a Navilution. So they have to come up with a new idea every month. You know, what is the new addition which we can do in the customization. So th And those surprises are not on the drawing board. So very soon they are going to come in the market. Probably you will see in another one or two months some, some new offering in the customization kit for Navi. So now we will never be, you know, like this, you know, every month. So every uh, month or every two months, there will be something unique which we are going to offer to the customers. Now on CNB, a little relief from all this crazy mad heat that we've been suffering when it comes to our summer here and I am taking you into much cooler climes. 
for some ice driving with Audi. Now in the past we've always gone to Aria Plog in Sweden or thereabouts. This time around it is still Lapland but it's in Finland and then we'll also introduce you to the all new second generation A5 family of cars. CNB has taken you into the Arctic conditions several times before. And so for our regular viewers, these visuals may not seem very new. All of those times though that we've experienced ice driving, it's been in Sweden. But this time, we're in Finland. One hundred and fifty kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. It is very much still part of the Lapland though, only on the Finnish side. The setting was familiar of course, hard packed ice courtesy of frozen lake and the chance to hone our skills on how to control a car on treacherously slippery surfaces. After experiencing a range of Audis on ice, this time we also have a new car to play with. The seemingly humble yet quite potent S5 Sportback. 3 litre turbocharged V6. 333 bhp. And very key to the exercise, Quattro or all wheel drive. No blue skies this time though, rather inclement weather, wet, cold and almost foreboding. But then the fun began, slipping, sliding and drifting. The intent as always was to control the car on ice with electronic stability control or ESC turned off. Now lots of clowning around and lots of fun. Well, that's part of all of this slipping and sliding on the ice, but you know, you shouldn't sort of forget the underlying theme to it all. There is a safety aspect to it. Now cars today are so capable, there's so much that they can do to really protect you as a driver from the point of view of the occupants as well and how the car handles on the road. Which is why when we come here, we switch off all the systems on the car so that, uh, well, that's when you actually start to hone your skills as a driver. How to keep control on your vehicle, especially in a tough situation. And really, the, that's, that's what brings me back. I mean, I'm back here now for the fourth time uh, in these conditions. And uh, every time I can tell you that I take something back with me and, uh, well, I hope I don't have those six sticky situations on the road. But when they do happen, this training should come back simply as reflex. We had a very experienced and I have to say very understanding instructor at hand as always, ready to reprimand but more crucially also to guide and help us. And of course if you go off track, you simply have to sit in the snow drift until the friendly neighborhood tractor comes and pulls you out. Now while I've done ice driving a few times, I cannot nearly claim to be a pro by any stretch of imagination. But I called on the tractor only once this time. The thing that really gets you through besides your skills with the throttle and the steering is the Quattro system that splits how much power the engine sends to either the rear or front wheels. Luckily for us, on day two, the weather got a lot better. And we got in some great time on the ice under the Scandinavian sun. Of course, one person who knows all of this only too well is CNB Jura and racing ace Aditya Patel, who was also on the drive. 
I've got off the driver's seat now and I'm with uh, the rather devious Aditya Patel <laughs> who's been having a lot of fun uh, as well. Well, I guess that's pretty much the theme, isn't it? Having a lot of fun out here on the ice. Yeah, that's why we're all here. You can see everybody get out of the cars with big smiles on their faces. I've got one fixed on my face. Yeah, constant smile, I would say. It's not just, uh, it, it doesn't go away. Uh, how different is this from the last time we did this a couple of years ago? Well, the car is different. Yesterday we had some very different conditions, um, but I mean, not too different, I think. The uh, weather yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that, you know, of course it was bad weather, it was a, almost a blizzard, and there were, at some points you came around a bend and you really pretty much couldn't tell where the track was. That was interesting in its own way because it kind of creates that challenge which uh, we tend to forget. I mean, the whole idea is to come here and say that, all right, in an extreme situation, how do you drive and how do you control the car the best possible way? So yesterday, it really kind of taught us that. Yeah, it actually really taught, uh, in my case, I mean, I, I really had to force myself to look as far as I could ahead, although the visibility was really low. And once you could catch what was coming towards you, it was probably a little easier. So I think it taught everybody the same thing. And also, it increases your attention span a lot. And I think that definitely helps wherever you drive if you can increase your attention span. So it was good fun. Good fun and great memories for sure. The ice driving experience always is. But there is always something more to learn and take back as well. Meanwhile, even as we drove the A5 on ice, the world is bracing itself for the next generation car from Audi. Revealed at an event at Audi headquarters in Ingolstadt, Germany, the new generation car has broken cover in its two-door Coupe Avtar. There will be a family of cars in this new generation too though, so yes, you can expect a Sportback, an S5 and then an RS5 too. The new A5 is wider and sleeker. The face is distinct with a more upright and straight headlamp cluster. The last A5 was considered one of the most beautiful cars of its generation, so it will be interesting to see if the new one lives up to that tag and gains a similar reputation. The new A5 Coupe will hit European markets by November this year after a Paris Motor Show debut in September. Audi will consider the new A5 family for India, but no decision has been taken as yet. If it does come, it won't be before the end of 2017. So I do hope that the new A5 does make it to India. There will be a sport pack. That's the one we'll be interested in. And of course the S5 and the RS5. What's not to like? On that note, it is goodbye. Thank you for joining us on another program and we'll see you on CNB next week. Please wear your seatbelts. Please wear your helmets. Bye.